So Google has a new smart speaker, the Nest Audio. It's bigger than a Nest Mini, but smaller than the Google Home Max. It's more expensive than the Nest Mini, but not as expensive as the Google Home Max, and it sounds better than the Nest Mini, but not as good as the Google Home Max. I think you kind of know what I'm getting at here, but let's get into it. How is the Nest Audio smart speaker? First, let's talk design because it's been pretty much completely redesigned here. My colleague Lily Katz said it best when she said that it kind of looks like a vertical pillow now, and I have to say that I agree. It stands vertically now, and along the top are the playback controls so you can lower volume or pause or play music simply by tapping on the speaker. So just like the Nest Mini and the Home Max, the Nest Audio is wrapped in a really nice fabric that Google says is acoustically transparent, which means it won't get in the way of anything that you're listening to. So the overall design of the speaker is supposed to blend into your home, so you can put it in the bedroom or in the living room or in the kitchen and wherever you put it, it's gonna look good. But there is one place that you can't put it and that's the bathroom. The speaker doesn't have an IP rating at all or even basic moisture protection. So putting it in the bathroom is a no-go. Now Google said one of the biggest complaints they got with the Home Max was that it was just too big. And I do agree, it was kind of big. Unless you had a dedicated spot for it, it's not like you could just put it on your nightstand. That changes with the Nest Audio. This is shaped more along the lines of something like the HomePod, which you can just sneak into a corner somewhere. And I have to say that after moving the speaker around, the Nest Audio does kind of fit anywhere. Okay, so by tapping the speaker, you can't switch between tracks and you also can't activate the Google Assistant. All right, fine, but what can it do? Well, it is still a smart speaker, so a lot. You can ask the Google Assistant questions, you can set timers, you can cast a YouTube video to your Chromecast if you have one connected to your TV, you can control your Philips Hue lights, you know, smart speaker stuff. Now in the Home app, you can group multiple speakers together, so you can have the same thing playing throughout multiple different rooms. You can also connect two speakers to have a left and a right stereo pair. And you can even use the speakers as an intercom to talk between rooms or to make phone calls, which is pretty cool. But all of this applies to all of the Google Home speakers, so what makes this one special? Well basically, there's two new features here. There's Media EQ and Ambient IQ. So let's start with Media EQ. This will adjust the EQ of the speaker depending on what you're listening to. So if you're listening to music, you want it to sound a little bit different than when you're listening to a podcast. This does that automatically. Now, if you don't like how it sounds, you can adjust it yourself. If you go into the home app, there's a little EQ section in there, but it's very basic. Then there's ambient IQ, which adjusts the volume of the speaker based on what's going on in your environment. So if you're walking around with a hair dryer in your hand, like my colleague Lily did to test this feature, then the speaker will automatically raise the volume so you can hear what it's playing over the noise. So one thing of note is that this feature only works with podcasts, which kind of makes sense because sometimes when you're playing music, you just want it to be playing ambiently in the background. You don't want it raising the volume every time something happens. Now this is still a Google Wi-Fi enabled smart speaker, so you can cast to it pretty easily if you're using a compatible app. It's completely compatible with all the major streaming services like Spotify, YouTube Music, Deezer. I even found the cast button in my Apple Music app, so that's nice. But you can also connect to it with Bluetooth because this has Bluetooth 5.0 and the AAC and SBC Bluetooth codex. So that's cool, but chances are most people are probably gonna be using this with Wi-Fi. Okay, now let's talk about privacy because this is a smart speaker with a microphone that you're gonna be putting in your house but Google really wants you to trust it here. The most obvious step to take is to just mute the microphone. Around the back of the speaker is a hardware mute button. And when you click it, you'll get a voice prompt telling you that the mic is muted. And you'll also see a little orange color, which is really nice because it kind of matches the same orange that's on my Pixel case. But once you do that, it completely disconnects the microphone so that it's not listening to you. And the lights on the front of the speaker will turn orange to let you know that the mic is muted. Another thing that Google is doing is that they say that the audio recordings will be kept separate from their advertising and won't be used for ad personalization. Kind of. In a weird roundabout way. Let, let me explain. So basically, Google doesn't actually need or use your audio recording. Once it has it, it transcribes it into text. Now, it does keep that text and retain the rights to use that information to serve you ads, but it doesn't actually use your audio recording. Plus, you can just turn that off if you want. Now, Google also gives you access to look at all your data that it has. So you can actually go in there, look at it, and delete it if you want to. All you gotta do is go into the Google Home app, click on the little profile picture in the upper right corner, 
click on assistant settings, and then you see a little button here that says your data in the assistant. Click on that any minute now, and there you go. You can even click on the My Activity button to go further into detail. And now you can see everything. You can completely opt out if you want. You can choose how long Google is allowed to save your activity. You can also just delete any of the information it has per day. Or if you wanna get really specific, click on the little three dot menu to see even more details or delete specific voice commands. Now, if all of that is too much to do, which I kind of agree, then you can always just do the next best thing. Hey Google, delete what I just said. All right. I deleted your most recent assistant activity. You'll be able to see the change on your assistant activity page in just a moment. Pretty cool. Okay, now let's get back to the fun stuff because the Nest audio speaker was designed to be right in the middle of the Nest Mini and the Google Home Max and that pretty much applies to its sound quality as well. Now it has a 75 millimeter midwoofer and a 19 millimeter tweeter that handles the highs, which is again, better than what the Nest Mini has to offer, but not quite up to par with the Home Max, obviously. The low end is also fine for most cases, but not quite what bass heads are after. That said, I really enjoyed the sound because of the algorithm that Google is applying to the music. Basically, as the volume gets lower, the speaker will adjust the EQ accordingly to bring up the volume in the low end to ensure that the bass can still be heard. This means that while listening to my favorite lo-fi hip hop stream on YouTube or Spotify while working, I could hear the bass lines even at lower volumes. Of course, clarity isn't great thanks to the physical limitations of the size of the speaker, which you can see by looking at the frequency graph. There's a slight drop off around 100 Hertz where volume and lows just don't get as loud. On the bright side, mid-range and treble response in the speaker sounded great. This was especially good for hearing instrumentation or while listening to podcasts since voices sound nice and clear. But keep in mind that just like the Google Home Max and even Apple's HomePod, the Nest Audio speaker does adjust its sound and EQ itself depending on where you place it. So you might get a slightly different sound if you place the speaker in the corner on a bookshelf versus on a table in the corner of your room. So how is the Nest Audio speaker? Well, it's pretty good I have to say, but should you buy one? I think the biggest selling point here depends on two things. One is the $99 price point. That's pretty tempting. Two is the fact that you can do multi-room audio. Now don't get me wrong, grouping speakers together for multi-room audio isn't a feature that's specific to the Nest Audio speaker. You can also do that with the Nest Minis or the Home Maxes, but the problem is that the Nest Minis are too small and they don't really sound good. And the Home Maxes are expensive as hell. So unless you wanna spend $300 a pop for multiple speakers, you're kind of stuck. At that $99 price point, the Nest Audio slots right in the middle of both of those. Now we can't talk about multi-room audio without bringing up the king of multi-room audio, and that's Sonos. But the cheapest Sonos speaker that has a voice assistant is the Sonos One, which starts at $199. So you can get two of these for the price of one of those, and I think that's very compelling for most people. Now if you want better sound quality, or if you do plan on building out a surround sound setup for watching movies and things, then obviously Sonos is still the way to go. But if you don't really care about that and just want a good sounding speaker to play the same song in multiple rooms of your house, then the Nest Audio is making a strong case why you should pick two of these up instead. And that should pretty much do it for this one. Thanks for watching. If you want to know more about this speaker or any of the other products we review, make sure to check out soundguys.com. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel or follow us on social. We are at Real Sound Guys on Instagram and on Twitter. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Happy listening.